Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to Tool Jitsu. Um, we're going to start to get into some demonstrations soon so you can kind of get a sense of uh, how this is applied and uh, you know whether or not you're attracted to this martial art. Before we get into that, again, it's an advanced self-defense system um, and it's pretty devastating, brutal stuff. So we need to get into who this is for and who this should be used by and who this is not for and who this is who should not be used by and this isn't going to be completely exhaustive i'm going to get into some just some brief generalities first i'm going to start off with who tool jitsu is not for who it's not for and anything they say here they may be unpopular opinions they're not given in a, in a spirit of judgment or anything like that um but at the end of the day um you know, you, you don't you don't let little kids drive cars. Uh, there has to be some kind of modicum of responsibility. Same thing with firearms, same thing with anything else. First things first, cannabis users, recreational cannabis users. And again, I don't say that from a spirit of judgment. Um, and I certainly don't say that by anybody who needs to take it as a medicine because they've got some sort of pain issue or um, some sort of anything like that. The reason why cannabis users, recreational cannabis users, cannot be tool jitsu practitioners, it's a safety thing. First things first, people who, who are known to use cannabis, um, the perception is a little bit off. Um, you, I've seen it, uh, whether it be on the job site, whether it be anywhere else, people have the tendency to flip out to things that they shouldn't flip out about. Um, and certainly when you're, you're handling something of this power and capability, um, that's just a non-starter. The second part of it is your reaction time is too slow. That's just all there is to it. If you're faced with a lethal threat, something like that, your ability to recognize it and respond to it um, is going to be hindered. And, um, and at the end of the day, if you're really serious about wanting to protect yourself, your family, things like that, you just simply, you'll make the choice as to whether you want to be a record, a habitual recreational cannabis user or not. That's your choice. The second group of people, and I'm just going to say two for now, there's more, but the second group of people who should not be practicing tool jitsu are, and I'm just going to say for the men um, right now, guys who use pornography. Um, it, it's a common thing. Um, lots of guys use pornography by God's grace. Um, I, I've been free for that for, for you know, well over 10 years. Um, the reason why you can't, because tool jitsu is more than just a martial art. It's a philosophy. It's a way of life. Um, and, and it's rooted in God and fear of God. Um, if, if you're making, if you're feeding a market, an economic market, um, that dehumanizes the subject, objectifies, um, how pornography ties into the demand for child pornography, human trafficking, that sort of thing. You got really got to ask yourself whether A, you fear God, and B, um, how your private actions in front of your computer and that sort of stuff are translating into the real um, abduction, torture, rape, and murder of women and children around the world. Men too, but mostly women and children. So that's the first part. Again, unpopular opinion. You don't have to like it, um, but you also, you know, it, it's your choice uh, how you live your life. It's your choice whether you watch these videos or not. So getting into who can use tool jitsu. The first group of people who can use tool jitsu are the people who are physically strong. You don't need to be a, a bodybuilder. You don't need to be a marathon runner. You do need to be somebody who can handle physical work. Um, again, so I'm looking at all the guys who are on the job site. Um, you know, I, I developed a little bit more of a physical and a mental toughness after getting out of the police and getting into construction and demolition and a few other things. And, and just, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit less comfortable. Um, if you can handle yourself in an eight hour work day, I, I think there's more value than that in um, going to gyms and things like that. You're, you're building, you're, you're developing uh, your hands and your wrists and, and other muscles in a way um, that when combined with gross motor movement um, or even shorter, quicker movements, that um, you're going to be a lot more capable uh, when it comes to that. You're also going to be able to endure in that kind of fight or if you get injured, you're going to be able to power through that kind of thing. Um, the second group of people who should be using tool jitsu are those who actually care enough about this to go out and get the physical, the legal training, the skills training and tools and weapon handling, self-defense, ground fighting, wrestling, boxing, things like that. Again, my recommendation, again, um, it's for education purpose only. 
boxing, wrestling, um, a little bit of ground fighting, that sort of thing. Go out to somebody who provides this kind of training. Go out to a PPCT. Again, there's others out there. And as we get into more videos, I'll give you more guidance as to where you can actually go and get this training from. And it's some of the same that people that I've gotten the training from. Again, I'm not taking on any risk or liability of teaching you all the fundamentals to build up. You actually have to go out and get that yourself and go to the people who are willing to take on that liability. You need to get some legal training. You need to get some training and some understanding of the criminal code of Canada. Um, if you're going to do this stuff, not just um, use of force, self-defense, um, what laws around weapons, murder, manslaughter, negligence, things like that. Again, this is if we're going to have some sort of democracy of self-defense and that we're not just outsourcing our, 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 our safety, so to speak, to uh, whether you're being attacked, if you can somehow get out your phone and call the police while you're actually being attacked and curb stomped and all that other stuff, or you're just relying on somebody else to do it for you. Um, it, yeah, it is a democracy of self-defense, but, but again, um, democracy really only works when um, people are educated enough and to know the issues and to, and to, to have the, the ability to make proper decisions. So that's the second part of it. The third group of people who really should be um, using tool jitsu and on the flip side um, of the coin is, is who should not be, and again, unpopular opinion, that's up to you, um, is those who fear God. And I'm not getting into a real, you know, religious checklist of sort of where you're at, but you got it, you got to be, at the end of the day, we're going to die. We're just going to die. Whether you're protecting your, you save your life for a little bit now, you can, you can save it. You can gain your life, life and lose it forever. Things like that. So if you don't have a conscience, a fear of God, a, a love of his creation, love of neighbor, those sorts of things. Um, and, and you're operating out of a malicious or malevolent or selfish, like God doesn't see me. God doesn't, um, know what I'm doing. There is no God. It doesn't matter. What do we do? We're just kind of overdeveloped monkeys or something like that, then then you're, you're using in the wrong sense. Again, anybody can go get a gun, anybody illegally, anybody can go buy a metal tool illegally and, and be a murderer. And um, that's just going to happen whether you watch these videos or not. But if you want to, you know, it, it's a nice thing to, to walk out into maybe a rougher neighborhood in other places where, where I've gone and, and I've done work um on different job sites and uh you know it's a place where people don't want to walk but there's there's women and children who just feel a little bit more comfortable because there's there's men stronger men um men who have a care and a conscience for who's around them um and for the well-being of, of again themselves their own families and uh, their communities um it's kind of the idea of the sheriff concept sheriffs and deputies in the united states it's sort of like that uh we don't have as much of that culture in canada because we've got you know typical city police forces and, and things like that. But um, that's just a little bit of that. We're going to get into some demonstrations soon. You're going to see a lot more of this guy, Bob. Um, he's a good friend. Um, this is not a real person, as you can tell. Um, this is a, a training and a punching dummy. Um, and we're going to get into some of this stuff and you're going to see it. But again, it's not going to make sense to you and it's not going to even benefit you in any way, shape or form. If you're not going out and getting the training, training and experience yourself, um, what you're going to see is basically a construction adaptation of the things that I did for nine years as a police officer. What kept me self safe, what kept me alive, what kept other people safe, what kept other people alive. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. This video is a little bit longer than most of the other ones. Um, so thanks for sticking with me and uh, we'll get into some fun, some fun training soon. Bye for now.